Well, the welcome mat has been rolled out for Narendra Modi this time round, but it hasn't always been the case. The right-wing Hindu nationalist was effectively blacklisted by the European Union for years after deadly communal riots back in 2002 in the state of Gujarat, which he governed for over a decade. But after his landslide victory in last year's general election, and with India's economy now growing faster than even China's, the one-time outcast is set to receive a warm reception here in France and across Europe. In today's Focus report, we take a look at the Prime Minister's early career, his ties to the Hindu right, and how he came to acquire a reputation as a business-friendly leader. For those accustomed to the chaos of Indian streets, Ahmedabad's modern infrastructure comes as a surprise. It's here that India's new Prime Minister Narendra Modi earned his stripes and built a reputation as an economic miracle maker. In the decade that he served as the Chief Minister, Gujarat clocked the highest economic growth rate in the country. Tushar Patel runs a million dollar business manufacturing industrial fabrics on the outskirts of Ahmedabad. Despite the growing demand, he does not want to set up operations anywhere else in India. I don't think there's any other state at the moment which is giving a support infrastructure as well as hindrance-free ambiance. You get your clearances, you get your pollution clearances, everything is moving smooth. So I think uh, Modi has been instrumental in making the system more efficient. Amongst Modi's flagship projects is the bustling automobile hub of Sanand, home to global auto giants. International analysts predicted that India would add 40 million jobs in the next decade if it followed the Gujarat model of development. Voters were drawn to this economic model, but also to the story of Modi's humble beginnings. He began his life in this dusty Gujarati town of Vadnagar as the son of an ordinary tea seller. Their tea stall was right here on this railway station. His father was well respected in the area. They were an ordinary family and Modi funded his education by selling tea. So he's a man who understands the meaning of the word poverty. It was also in Vadnagar that Modi began his political career as a member of the Hindu nationalist group, the RSS. At the organization's local office, we meet Mahendra Darji, Modi's childhood friend who served with him in the RSS. I remember this one is from the day when he invited all his friends for dinner to his house. He always wanted to serve the country in some way, and with time, his resolve only strengthened. So he decided to join the RSS movement as a worker. Today, the RSS has over 5 million members. The group is rigidly disciplined and mobilized its vast network to canvass for Modi during the general election. The Prime Minister's proximity to the Hindu right is a reminder of one of the darkest chapters in his political history. In 2002, Hindu right-wing mobs killed nearly 2,000 Muslims in Gujarat. Modi was accused of turning a blind eye to the violence. Shakila lost five members of her family in the deadly riots and became a key witness in the ongoing court trial investigating the incident. They check on all of us witnesses each morning. This is for our own protection. There are 150 million Muslims in India. Like Shakila, many of them feel alienated by Modi's political affiliations. I don't understand why he hates us Muslims. For instance, in our neighborhood, there's been no development. Everything remains the same as it was in 2002. We don't have facilities like the rest of the city. In recent months, the Prime Minister has tried to address the concerns of the Muslim minority in Parliament and in meetings with community leaders. Still, the ghost of the Gujarat riots continues to haunt him.